And good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's presentation. My name is Franklin. I'm one of the two co-founders of NorCal SCI. Um, this session is on uses, using resistance bands to exercise your full upper body and core. And it's uh, primarily for the quadriplegic uh, audience, but uh, anyone is welcome to, uh, to tune in. Uh, we have uh, a great program for you uh, that'll uh, involve using uh, fairly inexpensive equipment to uh, maintain a high uh, level of exercise in the comfort of your own home. So excited to get Rachel started on this program. A couple of notes, as usual, um, everyone has been muted and that way we could uh, eliminate any background distractions. Um, we will have a Q&A session towards the end of uh, the presentation. And so if you have any questions that you wish to ask uh, of Rachel, uh, you'll have that opportunity to do so at the end. Um, and then as usual, these uh, presentations are made possible through a generous grant that we received from the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. So we're grateful to them. And finally, we are recording this session. And that way, if you need to jump off at any time or if um, anyone was not able to make this presentation tonight, they'll have a, a recording of this thing. And we're actually gonna send the recording for both this one and the one that we have on Thursday night, that's for paraplegics. We're gonna send both of them out to everyone on Friday morning in case that uh, uh, both sessions might be of an interest to you. So that's kind of everything that I wanted to share with you. And uh, let's just uh, jump in and let me quickly introduce uh, Rachel, who's a nationally certified Pilates teacher, a certified strength and conditioning specialist, as well as a movement teacher specializing in working with people with neurological deficits, especially spinal cord injuries. Uh, she's currently pursuing her license for massage therapy, and I'm just so happy that she has uh, made uh, a lot of efforts to get these two sessions in for this month, and we wanted to really go out of our way to tailor them to two different types of abilities for quadriplegics and paraplegics. So uh, thank you, Rachel, for doing that. Good seeing you again. Welcome, and it's all yours. All righty, awesome. Cool, well, hi, welcome, everybody. Um, as always, thank you to Franklin and NorCal SCI for hosting these workshops. I love the educational component um, as much as I love teaching, so it's always fun to jump into this. All right. I'm going to jump right into sharing my screen here. So just give me a sec to get that going. And Rachel, if I may, um, I want to encourage yeah. everyone to turn their video feed on because Rachel is going to be doing a lot of about 20 or so uh, different demonstrations of movements. And so if you have your video feed on and if you've got some resistance bands with you, uh, you can feel free to participate and she could sort of eyeball you and give uh, sort of real time uh, suggestions on, uh, on on what you're doing. So it's up to you, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, if, if folks are just kind of settling in and getting adjusted, no worries. I've got just a few slides. We're going to talk for just a few minutes here. Um, really primarily the, the main portion of today's session is going to be movement based. So if you want to um, get settled in, then now's a good time. Um, so I just kind of want to preface today. I, um, for those of you maybe that are just joining for the first time and whatnot, um, I am an enabled bodied person. However, today I will be, um, I had a very generous client that is loaning me her wheelchair. So I'm gonna be showing you all of these movements and exercises in that wheelchair, except for just a few standing exercises that we're gonna be doing um, at the very end. So just kind of wanted to give you that heads up so that you'll be able to see how I'm using the bands, how I'm maneuvering the wheelchair. And we're gonna talk about some safety issues just to be mindful of. Okay, um, why resistance bands and why a home program centered around resistance bands? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my favorite set. Um, but just to just to talk through this, so easy band, um, resistance bands are so easy to use because you've got for most of the sets that you can buy online, there's varied resistance, and I'll just show you a few of these here. So I've got my resistance band set, and Franklin's going to drop the link into the chat box, but it's by a brand, and that's SB S as in Sarah, B as in boy socks. The socks is with an X. It comes with, uh, let's see, am I missing any? Five resistance bands, all of different colors and quote unquote weights. 
it's kind of hard to weight a resistance band in some sense, because obviously as you are stretching the resistance band, the resistance gets a little heavier. But just to give you a, kind of a reference here, we've got this first one, this yellow one I'm gonna be using, which is at 10 pounds, and I'll show you that one. It, it's all connected to the wall, so I don't wanna peel it away quite yet. We've got a blue one at 20 pounds. We've got a green one at 30 pounds a red one at 50 pounds and the black, where's my black, at 40 pounds, okay? So you've got a bunch of different options. To be really honest, when I'm working with these resistance bands for myself and my clients, we really only use two of them. We use the two lower ones being the 10 pound and the blue 20 pound one. Another option if you don't have one of these resistance band kits, uh, is, is just a good old fair ban. This is, you know, you might have gotten these from PT clinics in the past if you've had some shoulder prehab um, or shoulder issues. This is one of my all time favorites. Um, this is from the Franklin Method. I don't believe in one size fits all, but there's something truly magical about this band uh, where it, it really works for a lot of people. It's a pretty light resistance. You can bunch it up to make it harder. Um, it's quite long and that's also a good option. You can also buy much cheaper ones than this exact one online um, and that's always great. I will say the really nice thing about the SB socks resistance band is that all of the ends of them have carabiners and I'm holding them up if you can, uh, if you'd like to take a look. That might sound silly, but carabiners when you're doing quick switches or whether you or a caregiver is switching a band in and out, having a carabiner on the ends of all of these straps is surprisingly useful. Um, I also love carabiners. They're one of my favorite little tools and toys. They can make an exercise go from zero to 100 by connecting things or tying a knot around the carabiner. So those are always nice. Um, this kit that we have also comes with two handles. I'll be using these more in my Thursday class. And then it has two two elbow cuffs that are nicely padded on the inside and they have a ring for the carabiners. So you'll see how I'm using these tonight if I, that I'm using the cuff above the elbow and I'm anchoring the carabiner uh, onto that hook. It comes with a door stopper as well, again, which I have in place just for ease. I'll, I'll show you that when I adjust the camera. Um, so you can slide that carabiner or that door stopper anywhere you want in the door. Uh, and again, that just makes it um, accessible in terms of switching out the bands if that's what you need to do. Uh, this kit that I just showed you is $22, everything included minus that blue Thera band I just showed you. Um, so somewhat reasonable if, if that is in your budget. Okay, what else is really nice about these resistance bands is that you can easily get a full upper body abdominal, chest, back, shoulders, arms, deeper core when you're working on your breath and you're working on your posture. You get kind of an all-in-one workout just simply by facing different directions. Um, and I'll be showing you, I'll be showing you that as well. I just want to um, also give one more, one more precursor here. For folks that are um, ambulatory, if you're, if you're joining in on today also, Everything that we do in the seated position, you can also do in the standing or the kneeling position. That's always and also an option if that is there for you. Okay, what I also love about these TheraBand exercises is it really forces you to work on your posture. You can tell pretty quickly as you start to do some of these movements, if your posture isn't great. The exercise is gonna feel harder, the neck and everything is gonna be slightly out of position. Remember when it comes to seated alignment and posture, we've done quite a few workshops on that. So I'm not gonna go too much into that today, but just keep in mind that you can always use props, you know, putting a little rolled up towel in the small of your back, maybe even a foam roller going vertically up and down, putting something under your sit bones um, to, to prop you up a little bit more. But doing anything, using any prop that you need to use to bring you into a more aligned position is gonna make these, these exercises 
more accessible, easier, but I mean easier in a good way because you're gonna be more aligned. And remember when you're aligned, the connective tissue, the muscles and the nervous system is gonna connect faster. There's no traffic jam. Once we start slumping into that poor posture, that's when the traffic jam of the nerves and the muscles and the connective tissue all clump together. And it's harder for the right uh, areas to do what they're meant to do. They're cheap, $22. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, any and all of these exercises can be done single arm. So I know for a lot of folks out there, um, you might have a dominant side so much so where the other side, um, you might need assistance with that. And if you don't have a caregiver or something at that time and you just wanna work the stronger arm, all of these exercises can be done single arm. To flip that, you can also emphasize your quote unquote weaker side. I don't like to use the word weaker, but your less dominant side here um, by doing extra, giving a little extra love and doing some extra repetitions on that less dominant side. Okay, if you've been taking my workshops, <laughs> this slide probably looks very familiar. I think this slide has been in my last two or three workshops. Um, but I emphasize it so often because this is really how important it, this is. So just as a reminder, and for folks who are just joining today, um, what the hell is myofascia? So myofascia is a fancy word for the connections of all of the connective tissue through your body combined with the muscles, combined with the nerves. These pathways or meridians through your body are connected in patterns uh, depending on where you're looking in the body. So what we're looking at right now is the spiral line, which is on the left side. And you'll see, I'm gonna tip my camera down, you'll see that spiral line kind of creates this X, the, the letter X in front of the body. Why that's so important, especially for a lot of the TheraBand exercises we're gonna be doing today, is because we're, what we're doing with these exercises is we're primarily working the arms, the shoulders, and the back. But how is all of that connected to the rest of the body? It's not just connected through muscles, it's connected through this connective tissue called fascia. I want you to think of fascia as like the pith of an orange. So when you peel back an orange, you have that white webby pith going all the way around the orange, going through the orange, in between the slices, in the slices. That's how your connective tissue is the orange slices inside that are being held by that pith, those are your muscles. So this is a really nice way how we use one area of your body being your shoulders, your lats, your biceps, whatever you have access to in order to find the connection to the areas of your body that you don't have access to. We use the myofascial meridians to do that. So the spiral line is a really great, great one. We use the lats and we use some of the movements of the shoulder blades to connect lower into your abdominals. Likewise, on the back side of your body, you have something called the functional line. And you can see, I won't show you, you can see in a much nicer way in that photo, you have one of your lats. So remember, lat is your armpit muscle connecting to the opposite glutes and then the other lat connecting to the other side. So again, you have this nice X in the back of your body as well that helps basically connect upper body to your trunk and then to your lower body. Okay, so I just wanted to presence that because that is really what we're using here today to um, build strength, to build connection and, and to get more parts of the body moving more. Okay. Last slide, I'm gonna show you this and then we're gonna jump into the exercises, but if you wanna take a photo, now would be a good time. So for all of these exercises, so I'm gonna be showing you all of these today, plus some actually. So I'm gonna be showing you um, multiple variations for each of these, modifications, progressions, regressions, all of that sort of a thing. Um, I know I'm gonna get an answer probably at the end of the presentation, something along the lines of, but how many sets, how many reps, how many times a week? A good general rule with these TheraBand exercises is you're usually doing anywhere repetition wise in the eight to 25 range. That depends on how you're feeling. That depends on your setup and the resistance band you're using. 
Um, it depends on a lot of things, but staying within that range is, is usually appropriate. You can also superset some of these. What a superset means is I'm going to be showing you exercises in, uh, in three directions. We're going to be facing the TheraBand, we're going to be facing away from the TheraBand, and we're going to be facing sideways in relation to the TheraBand. You can be doing, so let's say you don't want to keep changing directions in between each, uh, each set. You can stay facing in one direction and you can do all of the exercises in one direction, but in between each of these exercises, you could do different movements. You could do shoulder external rotation. And again, I'll show you some of these when my screen is bigger. You can do an overhead press if you grab some weights. You can do some neck exercises and neck mobility exercises, which I ta taught in my la last workshop. You can do breathing exercises. You can work on the hands, which I'm teaching in my next workshop. So there's a lot of things you can do while you're resting in between each of these sets. Um, so that you're basically not ever really resting. You're always kind of in that working state. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of here. Give me one second here. Okay. Make sure I can see you and I can see my exercises here. Okay. So um, as Franklin suggested, if you'd like to turn your camera on so I can, uh, I can help people troubleshoot, I can kind of look at the screen and, and make sure folks are in a good position. Uh, no pressure, but if you'd like, uh, the offer still stands. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly show you my setup. Let me get all of my bands out of the way here. Okay, so taking you with me on a journey here. Okay, so what you'll see here is I have this door anchor. Actually, I'm gonna do this. Set you on the wheelchair here. Okay, you have this door anchor in the door. What's really nice about this door anchor, I'm gonna open the door, is that I can slide it as, high, you can't see me doing that. I can slide this as high or as low as I need. I recommend starting with that door anchor or with your TheraBand at about a shoulder height position, whether you're seated or standing. Um, if you're not using this door anchor and you've got the band around like this, a, a very strong base of a table or, um, or a desk or something like that, or if you have it knotted in the, in the door, then that's also fine. Just maybe wanting it around shoulder height. If that's not possible for you, not a big deal. That's just what we're shooting for. This is the, the lightest TheraBand, that, uh, resistance band that comes in that kit. This is 10 pounds, it's the yellow one. And I already have my cuffs attached. For those of you that won't have a caretaker helping you with this, having all of this set up is nice because what you'll see me do is I'll wheel up to it. I'm just gonna slip one hand in, uh, kind of bump it up, and then I'm gonna do the other hand. One last safety measure here. To do this very gingerly. <laughs> okay. One last safety measure measure here is when you are when we're going to have the chair facing in the other direction. For folks that are using a manual chair, I just want you to be careful because when we have the chair in the other direction here, and the bands are pulling this way. And I'll show you this when we get there, but you're gonna want, if you have anti-tippers on the back of your chair, you're gonna want to wanna put those on if they're not there already, because sometimes just pushing that band forces you back. Okay, this depends on wheelchairs and your setup um, and kind of the, the stability of both of those, but you also might wanna put some of the anti-tippers on just to be on the safe side. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Make sure you all can see me here. Okay. 
Actually, I'm going to keep you here. Great. Okay. Okay. So to start off, you're going to want to position yourself so that when you get your arms in, and this is where you may need a little bit of resistance. So I'm gonna take these, just slip them on. Again, this is just an easier way so you don't necessarily have to have, you can use your knuckles to kind of bump that up, slipping the other hand in. Of course, I'm cheating a little bit for time purposes. And then you would slip the other in. You wanna be at a distance away from the TheraBand where you feel like it's got a good pull on it, but it's not anything that's gonna yank you forward. So you want, so you basically want to be at a point where you can hold yourself back up against the chair. Maybe there's a little bit of a fight, but you've got a good resistance there. Okay, first exercise we're gonna do here is rows. So again, I'm staying with the cuffs. If, you, if you're able to hold or you want to hold, you can always do this. For the purposes of today's class, I'm really just gonna be talking um, more from using the cuffs above the arms. You could also just tie, if you're using a TheraBand, you could tie a loop in it and it's the same thing. You would just slip the loop over your shoulder. Um, my Thursday's class will be using the handles more. Okay, so a row to start, so remember, before we would even attach, I would have you use any props. Remember that can be a rolled up towel in the back. That could be, if you've got one hip that's a little off, that could be putting a towel under the hip that's dropped. Again, I have all of those tips uh, in prior, prior workshops, but you would, wanna, you would want those props in place. So starting with the row, you're gonna let your arms drift forward. I want your sternum being your chest bone facing directly to the anchor. Remember head and neck are all in a nice aligned position stacked on top of each other. Okay, so for this first row, bending at the elbows and really all I care about is the shape that your upper arm is pulling back in and you're gonna exhale to pull the arms back. For those of you with bars or handles or side guards or anything like that, you might just have to work around and bring your elbows a little bit wider. If you don't have any of those things getting in the way, I'd rather you go narrow. There's two ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you both ways. The first one is gonna be a narrow row. So I'm keeping my elbows close to my ribs once I pull back. Okay, what areas is this working? This is working your lats. This is working that X in front of your abdominals. Uh, that, sorry, that X in front of your body being the spiral line that I showed you on that slide because we're using all of our pulling muscles. So when we're facing the anchor, this is more for pulling muscles. When we're facing away from the anchor, it will be pushing muscles. Anything that uses our pulling muscles is gonna target upper and mid back with a little bit of low back, um, right in between the shoulder blades. So kind of rhomboid area, mid and low trap. Those are your muscles that hold you upright all day. I really wanna emphasize if you only have time to do five or six exercises, I highly recommend doing these first five or six exercises that we're gonna do where you're facing the anchor. Most of us, are kind of slumped into this position for most of the day, right? So any movements that open up the front of the body and activate the back of the body are gonna be really beneficial. Okay, so this is your, and so right now I, you can let your arms dangle or you can bend at the elbows. It doesn't really matter. The point is that pulling back of the arms. That's your narrow row. Your second option is to do what we call a high row. So swinging the elbows, it's kind of almost like a, a chicken wing, <laughs> swinging the elbows up and then pulling back. So right now my elbow is at the same height as my shoulder, okay? The thing you wanna be um, careful about with this one is that you're not hiking your shoulders up into your ears. 
So make sure shoulders are down and back. And you're still targeting those muscles in between the shoulder blades. We're just taking a slightly different angle. It's working the same muscles, but uh, different fibers of the muscles, not really important. It's just a different way to do this row. So that's the high row. You can have palms facing down or palms facing in. Yeah, and that's great. I see a few people doing that. That looks really good, everybody. Yeah. Okay, what do I have next? Row with rotation. This is one of my favorites. Again, depending on your chair, you might have to work around your chair. We're gonna be alternating back and forth. So I'm gonna start pulling my left arm back and I'm first gonna row that arm and then I'm gonna rotate and look over that left shoulder as if someone just called my name behind me. I'm rotating my ribs, I'm rotating my neck and I'm rotating my head and my eyes. For those of you that took the visual workshop, we talked about this a little bit. That was way long ago, so you might not remember. But I want you to look over that left shoulder. What's the furthest thing back behind you that you can see? The more that you can turn your eyes to help you rotate, the further you're gonna get. Those two things are connected. And then you're gonna come back to the center. Same thing on the other side. Rowing the right arm back, rotating, looking over that shoulder as much as you can. What's the furthest thing the eyes can see behind you to the right? And then coming back to the center, okay? And you're just alternating, looking over one shoulder, looking over the other shoulder. The speed that you do all of these exercises depend on your goal. I'm gonna be showing you the speed with these exercises uh, in more of a slow controlled way. It's just more of a, okay, how is everything feeling? Maybe you're gonna notice that, oh, it's a lot easier to rotate to my right than to my left. So maybe you do an extra few repetitions to the left. Um, however, if you wanted to make this home workout a little bit more cardio based, get the heart rate up, get the blood flowing a little bit more, you could also pick up the speed and bring this more into kind of a fluid rowing back and forth, uh, alternating rowing back and forth. Arms can be holding the bands, arms can be straight, arms can be bent, but all of a sudden now we're adding resistance. I'm gonna get out of breath here in a couple of seconds. So it's kind of like running arms, but now you're resisted. So your back line and your functional line is having to work a little bit harder. Yeah, and I see some people doing that. That's really good. And you can play with that resistance. You can go for time. You can set a timer and do this for five minutes. And then you can face the other way and do it for five minutes. So there's a lot of ways that you can design this kind of a program based on your needs and your goals. Okay, moving on. Uh, going to reverse fly. Okay, so this one, you're gonna hold the arms out. Uh, elbows don't have to be straight, but they can be palms facing in. You're going to open your arms out into a reverse fly. So almost as if you're about to give someone a big hug and then slowly with control, bring the arms back together. In the Pilates world, we call this one hug a tree. Isn't that cute? <laughs> okay, so pulling back, using the muscles between the shoulder blades and then resisting that forward. With all of these band exercises, I also just wanna say one more thing. Try to avoid the band pulling the arm. So remember the band doesn't control you, you control the bands. So for a movement like this, you can make that movement as fast or as slow as you'd like, but just making sure that you're always, um, you're always controlling the band and the band isn't controlling you. Again, that same movement works mid lower traps, all of the muscles between the shoulder blades. In other words, your whole back line if we're talking in the fascia world. All right, moving to an overhead fly. Yes, okay, this is great. I know some folks out there have limited shoulder and arm mobility, lifting the arms overhead. So, so do your best with this one. Got the Velcro digging in here. So you're gonna lift your arms as high as they'll go. 
you want, you're aiming for this Y position, like you're cheering for somebody. Okay, so arms are up and then you're doing the same thing. The arms are gonna drift forward. This is your starting position. The arms pull back, that's your ending position. Okay, I'm keeping my ribs knitted together here. So I'm not letting my rib cage wiggle or move around. I'm keeping that whole torso trunk area really stable. And it's just the arms and the shoulders that are moving around. Mm -hmm. So you're just doing this at a different angle. Again, we're working different fibers of the same muscles. You're still working back and functional line here. So for all of these exercises, I'm gonna tell you which muscle, primary muscles you're using and then which fascial lines you're using. So just so you know how I'm using that language. Uh, diagonal flat, yes, this one is fun. So next one, you're gonna do an alternating diagonal. So one arm comes up while the other comes down. So your arms are at a diagonal and then back to the center and then you alternate and switch. Other arm up, other arm down. Right arm up, left arm down. Yeah, that looks good, nice Claudia. And then other arm up, other arm down. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah, I see that, Paul, that's good. Mm -hmm. And you're just alternating back and forth. Again, this is also something that you can do with speed. You can increase the speed, um, but that is there for you. Okay, coming into snow angels. So again, this one, you're gonna pull into the resistance of the, of the band and you're gonna hold it there the whole time. So we're adding a component of isometric contraction meaning that you're holding it there the whole time. And then you're gonna come into a snow angel as if you were doing, as if you were doing a snow angel, I guess. <laughs> okay, so lifting the arms up and pulling the arms down, but you're pulling back into that resistance as much as you can. Again, just a friendly reminder here, as the arms come up, be careful that you're not shrugging up too much and that the arms, uh, the shoulders aren't climbing up into the ears. Okay. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, and are we feeling this in the back? Can people kind of feel that area working? Yeah, yeah. Circles, okay, this is a really nice one because this one gets a little bit more flowy. So you're basically combining the snow angels with the overhead fly. So you're just pulling your arms and you'll do circles in both directions, forward, back, and around. Forward, back, and around. Keep your palms facing forward the whole time. It helps open up the shoulders more. If you don't have any shoulder problems and if you wanna mix that up, you can, but I would recommend for, for, for the sake of shoulder neutrality and shoulder openness, in other words, keeping the shoulder in the easiest position where we're not compensating as many structures, we'll keep the palms facing forward. Yes, and then sorry, and then you would go in the other direction and you're just, you'll notice that it's the, the control is different. Going uh, back and then forward, you'll feel the band pulling you more, okay? So you're just trying to keep yourself against the chair. If you need to wear a seatbelt, either chest or waist seatbelt when you do this one, um, that might be an option for you also. Okay, just making sure I'm not missing anything, great. We're gonna go ahead and switch directions. So now we're gonna face away from the anchor. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, so if you're able to, this is where you might need help. You're gonna wanna sneak one of the bands over your head so that you're not quite as tangled. And now you're facing away from that anchor. Make sure I'm at a good position. I'm gonna adjust the camera so you all can, can still see me. So just, <laughs> now I'm caught. Oh, I didn't think this through, did I? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna move you with me. That should be a good angle. <laughs> so she says before she gets caught again. Okay, great. 
Okay, but if you didn't if you didn't have a camera, you would be positioned and you'd be ready to go. Again, you might need a little bit of assistance there, and that's fine. Okay, this is, be careful with this part. This is the part where you are definitely going to want. Uh, again, depending on your chair, your body, your setup, you're most likely going to want oops, uh, anti tippers. Okay, because now we have, as I was explaining before, if I were to pull, and I'm not, I don't want to tip too far back because this chair actually doesn't have anti tippers. Uh, if I were to pull my arms forward and the whole thing would tip back, then um, that would be not so good. So I'm actually just going to back up a tiny bit here. You want to make sure when you're lining yourself up that the center of your back is lined up with that anchor. Ish. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're angled one way, you're going to have a, you're going to have some band entanglement. We're going to go through the full series of exercises now facing forward. I want you to notice that literally every single exercise that we're doing facing forward, we just did facing the anchor. It's the exact same set of exercises. The names are slightly different, not important, but now we're facing forward. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of reverse this. So we started with a row. So now we're going to do uh, what I what I call a push press. This is also called serve a tray in the Pilates world. Okay, so arms start back. And then you're pulling those arms forward. One other thing here. Um, depending on your skin sensitivity. Sometimes these bands can irritate people and their skin, especially when they're facing away from the anchor. So you might want to have like a long sleeve or a sweatshirt or something like that on if you find that this irritates you after 25 repetitions for each of these. Okay, but here we are. We're in a nice aligned seated position. Exhale to push the arms forward. Inhale to bring the arms back. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Notice my trunk stays really steady and really solid. And I want you to have enough resistance on the band where you are feeling this whole, possibly for those of you uh, with sensations in this area, this whole upper abdominal area. Okay, so you might feel like it's pushing you into the seat, but I want to encourage you if you can to actually try to pull yourself away from the seat. It's okay if you, if that shirt doesn't lift off of the seat, but holding yourself in that upright position and fighting the resistance of the band is going to be a more challenging workout for your abdominals and for your deeper core muscles that are holding you in that position. Remember it's those deeper core muscles combined with your breath as you inhale and as you exhale that help you stabilize through that center cylinder structure of your body. Again, that was all more in a prior, uh, in my two workshops ago. So you can check that out on, on how the core works. Okay, so that is our push press. Yes, sorry, muscles were working there. Our chest, so kind of the pec area, um, obviously upper abdominals, um, deep core, especially with posture in this area. And if you're, if you're extending your arms at the end, a little bit of top of the shoulders and triceps. Uh, this would be working more of your front fascial line. Okay. Second exercise we're going to do here is chest fly. Okay. So again, this is the opposite of reverse fly. So arms are out to the side. Again, this is your same hug a tree, hug a human, <laughs> whoever you want to hug, hug a dog. Elbows can be slightly bent. Again, doesn't really matter, but opening the arms up. Notice my arms are at shoulder height and then closing together. I know all of these exercises, because the arms are moving, seem like we're focusing on the arms. Really, this is where I want you to focus. Abdominals, deeper core and back. It's all of those posture muscles holding you up helping you breathe and controlling your arms and doing whatever we want to do. Okay. Um, likewise, when we were facing the anchor, we did a row with a rotation. 
we're going to be doing the same thing. This is just more of a punch with a rotation. So fists or not punching one arm forward, you can have palm facing down or palm facing inward. Okay, so in other words, thumb up or thumb sideways. Again, it doesn't really matter, but what I really care about here is that rotation from your ribs. So you're trying to reach that hand as far forward, or you're trying to reach your elbow as far forward as you can, okay? Just gonna watch people do that one. Yeah. As a reminder, hang on, I see a couple of people where the neck is starting to drift forward. Can we stack that neck? That's better, that's better. Yeah, yeah, you all just fixed that at the same time. Okay, stack that neck on top of the body and find that same. So even as I punch forward, I still have my head and neck stacked over my spine. The tendency is gonna be to want to lean that up the neck and the upper chest forward. Try not to do that. Try to keep that center axis upright and you're just rotating and reaching around that axis. That's much better. That's much better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, diagonal chest fly. Just like we had the diagonal reverse fly, we're going to do diagonal chest fly on this side. So one arm up, one arm down, a diagonal closing, and then opening at the other diagonal. Closing, switch diagonals. That's it, palms are facing forward. And then also just as another side note here, you can keep moving with this, with this exercise. As another side note, keep in mind that pushing motions, we're in the pushing zone because we're facing away from the anchor. We're using front line, chest, and um, shoulders and triceps if you're straining your arms here. In the pushing zone, it's possible that you're able to increase your resistance. If you're using the set of resistance bands I'm recommending, you're going from a yellow to a blue. Or you might find that you can just wheel maybe a foot or so more forward and you could be doing the same and you're like, oh yeah, now I'm really feeling this, okay? So sorry, we were just doing that diagonal chest, uh, chest fly. Yeah, and that looks really good, everybody. I also just want to say one more thing. Um, for those of you that are either staying in this position using cuffs or not, especially for circulation related reasons, be checking on, and, and for skin integrity issues, be checking on the skin around your cuffs, maybe after every few exercises, especially if you're new to this, and make sure that the bottom part of your arm isn't turning purple because that's also happened before, okay? So just make sure you're doing checks with that. Okay, snow angels, we're doing the same thing. We're pulling the arms forward. I can see my hands in my periphery vision. I'm pulling the arms up overhead. This is the hard part. Remember, the more extended our arms are overhead, the harder our upper abdominals and therefore our deeper core has to work to keep us in that aligned position. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can just find a breath there. I would, I would recommend maybe an exhale to go up to help support that rib and that abdominal engagement and an inhale down. Exhale up and inhale down. Yeah, the band might be kind of sneaky here. It might be rubbing against your arms. So you'll just have to play with that. That looks great though, everybody. Yeah, nice, Cynthia. Uh-huh, okay. Moving to circles. Again, same thing we just did facing the anchor. Arms come forward, up. This is where you have to fight for it and out to the side. Forward, up. My palms are facing forward. My palms face in. My palms face forward. My palms face in. Again, just, just to keep the, the shoulders as open as possible. Mm -hmm. You can find that same breath. Exhale up and inhale around. And then you would switch directions going the other way, just noticing how that slightly changes it. Yeah, that's really great. Okay, yes, perfect. So that is it for facing away. 
I'm going to show you a few exercises facing sideways. And then for folks that um, are quadriplegic but are ambulatory, I'm going to show you some standing exercises at the very end. OK, so to face sideways, you would bring that arm and that band up and over. Again, you might need some assistance for there. If you're able to, you can even slip one of your cuffs off, turn, rotate, and then you could grab the cuff. For time purposes, I am just going to slightly cheat. And let's see. OK, I want to say for setup for this one, and I'm going to back up. I would normally tell you to face directly at a 90 degree angle from the band. However, if I do that, the band can really start to cut into my chest and get in the way. So I'm actually just going to have you slightly staggered. I'm not 90 degrees to the anchor. I'm maybe math. I'm, I'm maybe like 10 more degrees inward. Okay. It just gives you more room for your chest so that the band isn't hitting. Okay. We're starting with rotations. You can clap the hands together. You can squish the hands together. You can even cross the hands over and hold the elbows, whichever way you're doing it. You're going to twist your body. So trying to face your, uh, your, breastbone towards the anchor and then you're going to turn and face away this is where the work is pulling into that resistance slow to twist towards the anchor slow to twist away yeah i will say i see some people trying to work around the band i will say the hardest part of this exercise is getting yourself in a good position once you get in a good position where the the um resistance band isn't really cutting you off, it, this exercise will make more sense. <laughs> yeah, it just will take a little bit of, of adjusting. Uh-huh, okay. So you're adding this rotation. To add just a few variations to this, you can rotate down and low, and then back to the anchor. You can rotate up and high. So we turn these more into what we call wood chops down and low, up and high. We're working the obliques. We're working that X, the spiral line in the front of the body. We're working lats and we're working your back and your functional line. Rotational movement is so awesome and so good for you. I can't emphasize that enough. This is a really good one if you can get the hang of it. Just leaning in, seeing where I am. Okay, a side fly. So similar to how we face forward and back, I'm now going to take that arm, uh, just single arm for this one, and I'm going to do a side fly. I'm using the same muscles we did when we were facing the anchor. So mid lower trap, rhomboids in between the shoulder blade. In other words, back line, little bit of functional line. You probably even have some what we call lateral line in there. Those parts are important, but keeping your arm at shoulder height and opening and closing. Yeah, you can even add a rotation into that. You can go high, you can go low. So you've got so much room for play with these because you can vary your angles where you're pulling your arms. Another one you can do in this angle might be, I'm gonna turn towards you just a little bit, is taking this arm I would normally be having more resistance, but I'm not going to adjust this. And you're doing what we call arm adduction. So I'm pulling that arm into my body. I'm working my lat. This is such a good one for the lat and therefore parts of your abdominals and your spiral line. You can even do these two motions together, one arm pulling away, one arm squeezing in. It's kind of like this sweeping motion with your arm. Okay, so this is this all falls under that side fl fly category. I can either keep that hand low and do this, or I can sweep across the body. Either way, we're working chest, um, spiral, back line, functional line, all of those, all of those areas. Okay, a good exercise. So that's it for seated exercises with the TheraBand. I'm just gonna show you 
Oh, actually, wait, I lied. Oh God, I lied, I lied, sorry. You can keep the bands on. You can also use a resistance band for this um, easy peasy if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna do that. Okay, so um, this one is shoulder internal and shoulder external rotation. So arms are bent and you're kind of fighting in the resistance. This is one way to do it. I'm gonna show you another way. So hand starts in the midline. You could always put like a rolled up towel in between your elbow and your ribs and you're rotating that hand and elbow out to the side. Really important here to keep shoulders down and back and in a good position. Likewise, on this side, you could do shoulder internal rotation. The only downside to doing these two movements with the anchor is because we have is with the resistance bands because we have the anchor above the elbow it's going to be um because of levers and because of physics for lack of a better explanation you're not going to get as much resistance in that area which is why i recommend you can grab you can use the theraband or you could just use a sorry you can use the resistance band or you can use one of these uh, therabands and doing the same movement. So holding, and this is a really great way to superset one of your exercises, opening the arms up and then bringing them back together. This one is specifically for external rotation. This is for shoulder prehab. This is for specifically your rotator cuff muscles. So for any of you that have shoulder injuries or rehabbing a shoulder, uh, this is a great one um, I'm sure you've maybe have done it with physical therapists in the past also. Okay. I'm really quickly going to show you three standing exercises for folks that are ambulatory. Oops. Okay. Using a yoga block is fine. Uh, I don't recommend it if your balance isn't great. <clears throat> it's better to use maybe like a wide stool or a wide platform. I'm going to take the resistance band and I'm going to slide it all the way down. Just kidding. I'm not going to slide it all the way down or I'd break my door. I'm going to slide it as low as I can. <laughs> old, old doors. Okay. You would then take your feet, and this is where, um, you know, having a chair and all of that would be useful, but you'll slip the cuffs onto your ankles. And you're going to keep them on your ankles the whole time. Having a pole or a foam roller or a walker, I can get this over my ankle. Um, would, would be useful here as well. You'll see my anchor is a little high. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd have you go lower, uh, but I don't wanna break my door. Okay, we're starting by facing the anchor. Oh, I'm gonna tilt you down. I'm just gonna be showing you my lower body. That's all you really need to be seeing here. First exercise, you'll be standing on that ledge. I'll show you with my other foot. And you're gonna be finding what we call hip extension, okay? I let the band pull me forward. I let my glute and my hamstring pull me back. This exercise is as much about the leg that's moving as it is about your stance leg. Stance leg being the one that's on the yoga block. Both are working really hard. One is moving, one is stabilizing, emulating what you would be doing if you were walking, okay, right? So you always have a foot on the floor and a foot that's moving. If you're wanting to work more low back, more glutes, more lower leg, this is the exercise for you. It, it, it brings balance into play if you don't have a walker to hold on to, and it works the whole back line. You can even then hold it there you can do circles back behind you in both directions. That already burned out my legs. <laughs> it doesn't take much. 
<laughs> for these ones at least. Okay, uh, I'll show you facing side. There's two exercises you can do facing side. Same idea, I'm gonna anchor my body so that the band doesn't really get too much in the way of my other leg. And I'm gonna pull, so I'm facing sideways now, so that leg is across my body and I pull and I open. We're specifically working something called your lateral line. The muscles that hold your hip, that stabilize your hip, and that move the leg out to the side. This is a re these are really important areas for those of you that maybe find um, your hips get maybe a little uneven when you're walking because, because of weak glutes, or if you find that it's hard for you to balance or stabilize on your stabilizing leg, those are really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I see, I see a, a couple people doing these and that's good. Really the hardest part with these is just finding the, um, finding the angle so that the band doesn't get in the way. I'm gonna stay facing the same way and now I'm gonna move my other foot and I'm gonna kick that foot behind me. Again, I would normally have like a walker or a table or something to hold on to here. And I'm using the muscles on the inside of my hip, the inside of my leg. I'm using the bottom part of my glutes. This is something in the fascial world called the deep front line, also the back line, to pull that leg now towards the midline of my body, okay? You would then face, I'm not gonna show you this, but you would then face the other way and do the same two movements. So now you're working the opposite inside muscles and then you would switch and you're working the opposite outside muscles of your hip, okay? Last one uh, facing away. So I'm just gonna step over. It's okay if the band crosses. Now we're working more hip flexors, quad. Abdo abdominals are working for all of this. Uh, so in other words, more of your front line. So we find that stabilization. I'm facing away from the anchor and I'm kicking forward. I can do this with a straight leg. I can do this with a bent leg. I can even add in a hand tap. I'm moving slow. I can even add some external rotation as if I were kicking a soccer ball. Really good for the hips to get different hip angles, being internal and external rotation. But really the main one is just keeping your hips in neutral facing forward and sliding that leg forward and back with a little bit of resistance. Uh, yeah, let me slip out of these. That, oh, and sorry, I'm just gonna say one more thing. You can do a lot here. Like I mentioned before, you can do circles in the front. Um, you can do marching. You can do marching facing this way, kind of walking forward, walking back, side steps, right? There is a whole world out here to play with working the upper body and working the lower body. So I encourage you to get creative, find something that will motivate you, find something that targets the areas you're wanting to target, and then everything else kind of falls into place. Awesome. Cool, Franklin, I'm ready for questions. Thank you everybody for staying with me. I know we're a few minutes over. All right. Thank you, Rachel. And yeah. uh, good job, everyone. Those of you that were actually following along with uh, Rachel. So uh, great. Uh, we have a few questions. So the first one, actually, I got two of them is, uh, as you know, most quadriplegics don't have trunk control. So what is the best way to not sort of to avoid falling forward uh, doing many of these exercises? Yeah. So I would say a couple of things. I would say either using a belt. So whether that's your seat belt 
or you know pretending I, I i think most folks out there probably have a gait belt you can also take imagine this is a gait belt and you could wrap it around your chair as high as you need to to hold you back in against the chair that would be more applicable for when you're facing towards the anchor when you're facing away from the anchor you're kind of being pushed into the chair because you're you're pushing away but i would say yeah a couple things you can either use something to help you stabilize there you could decrease your resistance or the third thing is you would just move closer to the anchor so that it's not pulling you forward so much if you're doing these with somebody i always like to have them at a challenging enough position where maybe i'm standing behind them maybe i'm just lightly pulling their shoulders back and i'm letting go and i'm having them find their balance as they're doing some rows and then i lightly pull them back again if they start to drift forward so if you've got somebody there to assist you you can have them do that also okay yeah. uh, next question this person is interested in kind of reviewing the the uh, the exercise that you showed on expanding his chest because i guess he's probably like little hunched in yeah yeah let me um shimmy my ankle cuffs back into elbow cuffs here. yeah so for this one so you're facing in towards the anchor Okay, for now, facing in towards the anchor, you have a couple of options. Your hands can be at shoulder height. That's for the that's for the more strict reverse fly. Oh yeah, and this is a little low. I forgot I have my anchor a little bit low, but um, yours would be a little bit higher. So you're doing so. This is the reverse fly. Elbows can be bent. They can be resting. They can be resting on the bands. Whatever they're doing, really, what I care about is what your upper arm. When I refer to your upper arm, I refer to this this area here above your elbow and what your shoulder blade is doing. So I want shoulder blades moving towards each other, so pinching together, and then your arms are opening back. So think of having a nice expansive and nice open collarbones. Again, like you're kind of going in for a really big hug. Right. Yeah. And uh, really a lot of these uh, focus on the shoulders, uh, which I know a lot of quadriplegics that are tend to be challenged with. Uh, they experience rotator cuff, shoulder pain, you know, things like that. So uh, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. So this is a little odd because this person is not ambulatory, but they were intrigued by the, the last few uh, exercises that you did. They wanna know if, uh, if it, even though they're not ambulatory, if they were to use their caretaker to do some of those exercises in bed or in, in a chair, if it'll make sense, if you, if you think that's something that's practical or would even do anything. Yeah, um, I would say a couple of things. If that is, firstly, if that is safe for both of you to do, then go for it like if perhaps you're not ambulatory but you're able to stand you know with someone maybe blocking out a knee or you're able to stand on your own and you just need someone supporting you then absolutely you don't need to be standing on a yoga block you can just be flat on the floor and you'd be moving one of your legs out to the side um I will say one. So anyway, so yes, as long as it's safe, you can also try doing these. Like if you've got the TheraBand, you can try them first without the TheraBand. Are you just able to come into a standing position? And then are you just able to do either a front, a back, a side or a kick in? So maybe that's where you start. And you can also come so you're in between a doorway, you've got good support, and then you can do some of those, and then you could add resistance. Okay. I will also say that, and we didn't get to this, I did have it on the list, but if you're interested in doing some of these in your bed and it's 
um, available for you to do so. You can also do a whole leg series lying on your back. So what that would look like, I'm just gonna show this just very briefly here. So you could do this, if, if you're able to get, oh, that cuff is tight. If you're able to get down onto the floor, or if you're able to do this on your, <laughs> on your bed. Okay, you, you would be smarter than me and you would, you would get in the position first, but, so your legs would be, let's see, can you see my legs? Yeah, so your legs would be here and you could do a whole leg series up and down. You could do circles. You could do alternating kicks. What's really nice is the bands give you lift. So if it's hard for you to keep your legs up, the bands are there, but then they also add a little bit of resistance, a little bit of fluidity. So, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, who would have thought that this is where I'd end up? Okay, so. You're gonna so, be a YouTube sensation <laughs> here. <laughs> Oh my God, I forgot this goes on YouTube. Okay, so you're just in this position, you want your head in line with the anchor. And then you might not need a caretaker. For those of you that are ambulatory, this is a really great, these are really awesome. This is actually how I start all of my client sessions um, with the people that I work with that have spinal cord injury. We do a whole leg series here. You could do scissors. Um, it helps relieve some of the pressure on the sacrum. It helps get the legs moving. Um, it it adds some buoy it adds some buoyancy to the legs. Okay, so yeah, so that's another option if if that is accessible and safe, and if that makes sense for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question: At what point would I recognize the need to move from one uh, resistance band to the other? I guess they're talking about mm. the the weight. Yeah. Right. That's a great question. I would say when you have moved forward or back in your wheelchair as far as you can move forward or back and either the chair is tipping or if you look back and the tubing is like, whoa, this tubing is really as far stretched as it can go, go ahead and just bump up your weight and try it and see if it's too much. Um, if it's too much, you'll know pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, next question. Is there a reason you are putting the strap above your elbow versus your wrist? It seems you wouldn't get much resistance when it's above your elbow. Yeah. So the reason I do that is because I'm assuming for this class, and we're going to talk about this in my Thursday class, but for this class, I'm kind of just making a very broad assumption. Um, for, for folks with quadru quadriplegia that are on this call, I'm making a broad assumption that tricep strength is challenging. If I were to put the cuff on the wrist, it would require that I have, that I have some tricep strength connection and control because now my elbow has to be straight. So really there's no difference between putting it on the wrist and holding on to it unless the only thing that's hindering you from doing that is grip strength. If you have tricep strength, but not necessarily grip strength, by all means, put, put um, the cuffs on the wrists and come to my Thursday class. And I'm gonna be showing you um, most of these exercises with more variations where we're working more through the triceps. So that was the reason I did that for this class. Okay, uh, last question. So this person wants to know how can they where would they strap the resistance bands if they wanted to do some exercises while in bed? Hmm. That's Any a great ideas? question. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> if you are willing to drill a few holes into the wall above your bed, um, I actually, I did have, I used to have one client that did this. You could, so say for example, this is the bed and this is above the bed. You could take um, an eye hook or a fish hook. I forget the difference between those. Either way, you would just take a hook and you would take a carabiner and then you could put the resistance band through the carabiner 
and you could do some of this series lying down in bed. You could do a whole arm series lying down in bed and you could do a leg series lying down in bed if you have help or if you're able to. Um, that's one thought. Another thought, like depending on your bed frame, if you've got something you could wrap it around your bed frame. Right. Um, you know, otherwise it would be a little tricky, but if you're willing to just stick one eye hook above your bed, um, it works and, and it can, it can, and if you're unable to get down onto the floor, it's a really good way to be able to access some of that upper body and arm work from the bed, um, because you could just strap in when you're on there. Okay. All right. So Rachel, Thursday night's class, so Thursday, everyone is going to be a class, same time, um, really designed more for individuals that are at the paraplegia sort of level, but anyone is welcome to attend. So would you say that the, the movements on Thursday's class are going to be a little bit more advanced or how would you differentiate between these two classes? Yeah, they're going to be more advanced. I'm going to go, the first half of the presentation is going to be quite similar to what we did with this excuse me, but all of the exercises, instead of using cuffs, I'm gonna switch them out and we're gonna be using the handles. So people are gonna be holding on to them. Again, if you're one of those folks that maybe doesn't have grip strength, but you have tricep strength, then throw those cuffs around your wrists and join Thursday's class. Otherwise, we're gonna be using the handle and it's gonna be more advanced just in the sense of, we're gonna be working all the way down out through your tricep and out through your hand using grip strength, um, using more things like tricep press, using more of a push and a rotate where we're just finding that full extension through the arm. So it'll be a really similar set of exercises with a bunch of additions for, for the folks that can, um, that can use their triceps. And then I'm also going to go over some of the more of the standing work as well. Okay. All right, everyone, uh, there you have it. So Thursday night at 5.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's when we would actually start. Um, and you're still able to register for that class, just go to NorCal SCI's website, go to the calendar section if you are looking for the link and uh, it'll be there. Uh, once again, uh, thanks to uh, the Reef Foundation for enabling us to bring these uh, series to everyone. It's part of our Virtual is a New Reality series. And thank you to Rachel. Everyone, uh, you will receive the recording uh, of tonight's session on Friday morning. Once we complete the Thursday night session for paraplegics, uh, we'll be sending both videos to everyone uh, just so that you would have them if you feel that you could benefit from both of them. Thank you, Rachel. Um, you did uh, a fantastic job uh, once again, and uh, look forward to seeing you on Thursday night, everyone. Good night. All right, sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.